I pushed, I've got my hips, heads on the inside. To my wizard, hip in and scroll. Double pull, side turtle, yeah, simple, yeah. One more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes me down. Boom. Great space suit possible. Scooting, scooting, scooting. Back stroke. Cut the head. Hips. Head on the inside. Hips again. Come to the front. Front head lock. Three. Right. Back on this. Yeah. Clear? Yeah, two, two. Nice and sharp. Right, when you've got a triangle sunk in and someone's built a frame in front of you, they know that they're deep in this triangle. And I can't get this across his body, right? That's what he's built this frame for, to stop me doing that. Right? Does that make sense? I'm lifting this with my whole body instead of my arm, my arm, much of my arm, but then I'm bracing it and then removing my body. It's the same thing with, the, with this. You lift, then you push it across as you move yourself away. You might get away with it. If you scoot fast, you might get away with just pushing your head, but like, uh, essentially it works out the strongest out. Yeah, if he's strong, that's not going to get his head in. Boom, and then, look, it's still going to be tight. If I go down, back to square one, innit? In, he's tight, there's your space. Yeah, with the hips, use the hips, use that pose. That's why you're on the post hand as well. So you get good elevation, your hips are strong, innit? Yeah? A couple of minutes, a couple of minutes, yeah. Moving back in the opposite direction again, I want to give him something to think about, especially if I'm planning to stay close enough to attack. So, if I'm moving this way, I want to draw his attention to this side. I want to make sure that he's, psychologically, his weight is this direction. So I'm going to give him something to feel that, okay? But as I do it, I'm going to, dra I'm going to drag at the same time. So again, I'll touch with the jab. I'll touch with the jab. But then as I drag, I'm coming across here. Because as soon as I put this, I'm not even planning on punching with this arm. If I reach here and start to pull this, he's naturally going to pull back in that direction because he's not the one to be pulled in that way, okay? So that lazy drag on that side is useful to start influencing his movement. Okay? In, in reality, it's just a touch. But in reality, what he's gonna feel is this. If Jimmy does that to me, yeah, you drag this. I'm gonna start pulling that like this. Bang! And it's gonna sway me up. Does that make sense? So, same again. Stinging a jab, stinging a jab. Now I go off a jab with this one, I like to throw the jab out there and then come across. Just because my arm's already out there then. Yeah. Touch. Touch. Straight through. Yeah? Yep. Have a play with it. Yeah, training with Dan, um, Dan and um, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Woolhead. Yeah man, it's a good, good bunch of guys. To, uh, to train with here as well, just like at Renegade when I was up there last week. Um, they got a nice facility, and um, obviously Dan's got a wealth of knowledge in terms of obviously the aspects of and intricacies of MMA, the fighting in MMA. Do you know what I mean? So, and obviously he's a UFC commentator, so so he's got he's got he's got great analysis skills as well as Jimmy Warhead, former UFC fighter, now Bellator fighter. So we're still we're still on the same journey in terms of fighting fighting. So. Obviously, I can I can pick up stuff from him as well, as well as as well as Dan, and obviously some some, some good bunch of guys down here to train with as well. Do you know what I mean? So today was a, today was a really 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 good session uh, ran by um, by Dan Dan and Jimmy, and I'm very appreciative of the time that they um, gave to me to 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 be able to, to to share on their knowledge. So as I was saying last week, I've got loads and loads of different jabs. Okay. 
I call this a snap. Because there's no power in it aside from what my tricep and my deltoid can put in it. I'm snapping it out there. This is one of my 85, 90% of techniques that are just meant to open guards up, okay? My next jab after this, I call a push, okay? This is where we're moving forward. So Jimmy's gonna do two jabs to me, I'm gonna catch counter, catch counter. Then on the next one, I'm gonna go catch counter, push. Okay, a little progress on the next one. When your padman gets used to your timing, it can give you a bit of space as well. Two catch counter, one, two catch counter, one catch counter with a push. Yep. You see that little forward progression there, a little bit more venom behind it. I'm stepping in with a bit of power because my back foot's driving into it. Yeah? Let's go again. Yep. Yeah. One more. Just watch my feet, watch my feet. Yeah? Let's add that on. Let's go. Technical session today, so it's really good from Dan the analysis. You've got my striking, working different sorts, or today we did different sorts of jabs, working movement, a bit of everything, and it's it's good to get in with different coaches, um, so you can take off little bits from everyone. Because uh, if you stick with one coach, like you're only going to know their style really. So. As I've travelled, like when I travelled around the world, training with different coaches, even travelling around the country, you get to train with different fighters, pick up different things. So, some that Dan's taught today, I can now add into my game, as well as other things that I've been taught, which will make me even better as a fighter. We used to train with a guy called Ricardo Sanders. Yeah. Remember Ricardo, right? Ricardo was one of the best boxers in the UK by a long way as an amateur. On the same Olympic squad as Amir Khan and everything. When, when we get to training and start warming up, he was already there, what, an hour? Yeah, yeah, just doing slow and methodical stuff. Yeah. Fucking hours of that. Yeah. Just drilling his subconscious. You know when you're fighting, you maintain about 20% of your technique. That's, that's kind of what, what the average research says. 80% of it goes out the window with fucking adrenaline and nerves, okay? So that 20% that you keep in a hold of, you don't want that to be conscious. You don't want to think about, oh, I'm going to slip there, I'm going to slip there. You want your body to do it naturally because it's ingrained in you. So what you're doing here is you're teaching those patterns to yourself. Like, make sure the patterns are correct every time. Slow it down. 50% doesn't matter. Make it correct. Yeah? Don't rush it. Let's go again. <laughs> yeah. If you want to just cover, just cover. I, the thing is, I've never drove this with a partner before. This is my combination that I drill on my own. So, same again. Jab, jab. One, push, split, over, up, body, hook. Okay? We'll finish it there right now. We're going to add a body kick on the end of it. That's where we're going with it. Alright? Stick with the punches for now, then we'll have to kick one. Okay? Let's do this slightly live. So Jimmy just reacts how you did. So if I'm in, yeah, yeah. So if I'm, if I'm throwing jabs at Jimmy, and I see that arm starting to reach out to me, that even I'll throw it short sometimes, just to see how far it's going to come forward. Okay? That allows me to then pump a fake to catch that hand even easier. Yeah? This is the, the benefits in the snap. The intention is not to land on the chin. This is. Have you watched the back game? Has anyone watched the back game video yet? I know Hedwig's watched it in Truman. Got on the YouTube channel, watch the back game video. There's something that Jimmy Gifford talks about. If you remember nothing from the video, it's this. And it's the way that he coaches it is beautiful. And I won't do it just this. We'll put it up on the TV in a minute. You can get YouTube up on that, can't you? Back game one. 
He said, the closest thing is the furthest thing, and the furthest thing is the closest thing. And I, I, mean, I, I try and teach it in the way that he does, but it's just fucking, it's poetic. So he's talking about a jab. If we're standing in jabbing range, if I throw my jab, it's touching his glove, okay? Touching his glove. That's the extent of my range without me stepping. If I twist her and throw a right hand, as Jimmy Gifford says, that's going through his fucking face, right? The closest thing is the furthest thing. The furthest thing is the closest thing. Works the same with the teeth. Lead teeth, rear teeth, okay? So you, you make up some of the distance by turning, by twisting, by extending your body through the, through the shot. So the benefit in throwing a jab and snapping with the hand is that it looks like I'm all the way extended out and I'm not touching him, so he feels safe. McGregor did this against Alvarez. He created an invisible wall. And Alvarez is like, oh, I'm safe behind this wall. Because McGregor was throwing to miss. And then he steps through that, that invisible wall. Like you can create illusions around people. You can make them feel like they're safe when they're not. Yeah? Does that make sense? So, so with the jab, with the jab, when you sting in the jab, you start to get a reaction. Yeah? That'll give me an opportunity to drag that hand away. Have a bit of a play about with that. Play about. Do you want to watch it? Oh, perfect. Let's just quick watch this. Just two seconds. Because I can't explain it as well as he does. Alright, here we go. Get set. Traditional stance. Clearly not hitting me. Yeah. Put back. Cross. It's fucking going through my head. <laughs> so, the furthest thing is the closest thing. So I do some things with bits where I don't hold numbers all the time. So I'll watch, which is fine. Watch this combination. I hold the pads like this. Look at the distance. I'm not doing this. But look, he's touching my hand here. How's that impossible? It's the same thing. Get set. Front teeth. Not touching. Rear teeth. I'm fucked. Right? So the furthest thing is the closest thing. So you don't have to listen to this match parry. I almost prefer a throw that jab that he carries. Because if he can parry, that fucking thing's going through his face. <laughs> so you don't have to land the jab to land across. If you can get him to parry, this is going to come Yeah. Yeah? Right? So that's. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Good. I, I can't explain it as well as Giff. Jimmy Giff was my boxing coach, well, say boxing coach. He was one of my main coaches for the last few of my fights. And he just lives in the back cave. He fucking lives in that little basement gym and just take, trains the best fighters in the world. John Jones, McGregor, Cowboy, everybody comes through that gym. Um, he was in my corner a bunch of times, the corner Misha Tate when she won the belt. He's just a, he's got a great mind. And sometimes the way he explains things make more sense to me because the way he words them. That's why I wanted you to hear that. Does that make sense? The closest thing is the furthest, and the furthest thing is the closest. All about that body extension. <laughs> so when you're using that jab, don't always think about it's got to hit him, it's got to hit him. It hasn't. Hasn't. Your jab is, that's, that's, the, that's the lock pick. That's the thing that unlocks his guard. The thing that shows you whether there's a hole there, or there, or there, or... Do you know what I mean? Wherever the holes are, whatever he does, that's what that is. Jimmy Gifford, in an amateur boxing um, fight, he'll send his fighter in with a double jab. We know nothing about this guy throw a double jab. What does he do? Does he back up? Does he shell up? Does he slip to the side? And then everything comes off that. So you, like, your jabs, your feet are that tall. It's your prod, your prod, your post, your feel. Test the guard. Okay? <clears throat> what we'll do now, we'll just add a little bit of live stuff in. Um, just with the jab to start with, and then we'll pick it up. Okay. What I want you to do is just have a play about with your, with your timing on catch counter. Give yourself 10 each or something, but one person's going to throw the jab and the one's going to counter. Okay? But the person that's throwing the jab is the one that's setting the timing on this one, okay? That's the first thing. This is not, the, the person countering is not deciding on the timing. You're reacting. So, you're leaving. Yeah. Don't always have to return. Yeah? It's on my time, it's on my turn. I'm feeling it out and I'm just checking everything. Just feeling it out. Seeing where my arms are, seeing what range I've got, where my feet need to be when I'm moving. Okay? It's live but it's cooperative. Okay? Help each other. Let's go. Yeah. 